Hey guys and welcome to episode 3 of how to be a 3D animator. In this video we'll be discussing the difference between IK and FK and which scenarios you should be using each one. Let's get to it right away. Okay, so FK stands for forward kinematics, IK stands for inverse kinematics and I'll explain each in full detail. So FK is essentially a hierarchy of chains, which means the bones are chained from parent to child, which means if you rotate the shoulder, it moves the elbow because the elbow is parented to the shoulder, which also means if you move the shoulder, it moves the elbow, then the elbow moves the wrist or the forearm because everything is in a chain. The wrist is parented to the elbow and the elbow is parented to the shoulder. So the shoulder controls the movement of the entire arm because of this chain system. The good thing about animating your arms in FK is that it gives you an added arc motion to your animation automatically, which is not the case for IK. And you definitely need arcs in your animation if you want it to look more realistic. That is one of the keys in animation is having arcs all throughout. Now with IK, it works sort of in reverse or in inverse as the name suggests, inverse kinematic. With IK, you're able to move the entire arm just with the wrist control. So with IK, you just have the wrist control, which moves the entire arm. And then you also have an elbow control controlling which direction you want the elbow to be pointing. So FK is a hierarchy of parents and children, IK is just two controls, the wrist control, which moves the entire arm, and the elbow control. The downside of animating hands in IK is that it has a robotic feel to it because you're telling the hand to go from point A to point B with this one control and the computer is generating that path. And usually that path is very linear. It doesn't implement any sort of arcs unless you manually go in and set keys to create that arc movement. Now the good thing about using IK is that it's great when you need the arm to grab or hold something or if the arm is stationary and the body is moving. So again, FK creates an arc, IK doesn't. Now when to use FK and IK? For legs, you almost always need to keep them in IK unless your character is flying, swimming, or doing a roundhouse kick or something in the air where the legs need to move freely and not be touching the ground. For arms, however, there are situations where each kinematic shines. So for example, if your character is moving their arms around during a fight or in a dialogue scene and they're moving their arms around, this most likely needs to be FK, which again is the parent hierarchy chain. Now this creates a natural curve to reach where the arm needs to go. So it's not like IK where you say, okay, I want the arm to be here. And then on frame 10, I want the arm to be there. With FK, you have to control each joint to say, okay, I want this joint to be doing this at this point, and then do this, this, and that to reach that point. Now, you could technically use IK for dialogue shots and fight scenes and whatnot. You know, it's not against the law, it's just frowned upon. It's like going to Costco and getting 20 food samples in a row. I mean, it's not legal, but it's definitely frowned upon. I, I've heard from a friend. I, I don't know this from experience or anything. Moving on, now if your character is sitting down, hands on the table, or is driving and is holding the steering wheel, or is pushing a box like this example, where the character is really interacting with an object and the hand needs to be still while the body is moving, then this is a perfect opportunity to use IK. And this is the downfall of FK. So in this scenario where we have the character pushing the box, what happens when we change the controls to FK? The arms start moving with the body. And so they start clipping through the object because the arms aren't staying where we tell them to stay. Well, technically they are, but they're being moved, they're parented to the body. So if we want the hands to stay on top of that box where we position them, we have to switch it to IK and say, stay here. And then we can animate the body to show that struggling. Okay, I think that about concludes this video. If this video helped you guys at all, please make sure to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button with the little bell beside it, just so you stay notified when uh, future videos come out. 
Uh, I will try and keep a weekly schedule for videos, but I did just start a full-time job with a four-hour commute. So it's going to be a little hard to put in the hours for these videos because they do take a long time. Like this video was about five to six minutes, but it actually took more like eight hours to make. Eight hours or more just to collect everything, record everything, edit everything. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy animating.